So in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Now I've been involved in building arcade machines for a good few years now but what I want to show today is how to put together the arcade switches. Now these are quite common and you'll see these on AliExpress for just a few pounds but they really come in handy when building things like arcade cabinets and desk uh, machines and stuff like that you know um diy sort of stuff because it really does make it a little bit neater with it you know we've got a switch there and we've got our three pin kettle cable as well but a lot of people do struggle with the wiring of it so this is one i've already prepared and we're going to go through the whole process today and yeah so it, it's not too complicated you will um, need to be somewhat confident with some basic tools i mean i'm not going to use any wire strippers in this video purely because you guys at home probably don't have wire strippers you may, might just have a pair of um snips like this a pair of these ones to be fair rubbish but they'll do um something like this some nose pliers and something to actually trim the actual cable with again i'm not going to be using a wire trimmer i'm just going to be using a knife but guys just be careful because if you're going to be using a sharp knife like this is a really sharp knife just be careful because i don't want you guys commenting below saying i've just spent the last couple of hours in a and e because i've just split my hand open cutting some wires so guys don't do that so what we're going to need we're going to need a couple of things now to actually power everything in your arcade machine you're going to need a extension Cord, multi. So normally in the past I've only ever needed a two gang power extension and yeah that's pretty much all I've ever really needed. Now if you are adding maybe a subwoofer or something fancy, a really fancy audio system then you might want to go for a three gang or even a four or possibly even one of the ones with the USB ports on them now. I know a lot of the um, amps and stuff like that can be actually powered by the USB connections you know it's just entirely up to you uh, like for example on the Raspberry Pi you do need to power like an external audio system with a USB normally so that would come in handy with free up a USB port on the Raspberry Pi that's for sure so yeah you need uh, an extension like this and um, this is just a standard UK one just a three pin one we're going to be cutting this off of course now normally you don't need a huge amount of wire to do this because ultimately every all the wiring in your cabinet is coming towards this anyway so really normally I would only leave about that much if that and um, yeah that's all we pretty much need you obviously need your switch now there's two types of these I've only got one the one type of them handy handy unfortunately and it's this one here uh, we've got our earth we've got our neutral <clears throat> and we've got another connection pin here and we've got our pins down here as well our lives over here but we've got kind of it connects through here if that makes sense because we need to power this little LED we need to connect it through our fuse as well which is a 10 amp fuse and um, yeah so We'll start just in a second because we've got a few more parts we need to make sure we've got. But yeah, um, we need to make sure we've got one of these. So a few things that I do it to make it really, you know, professionally done. Because we don't want to be hashing this and throwing this together and making an absolute mess. So we need these what we call terminal clips, spades. You can even call them that, um, and. They just make things a little bit easier when wiring it to the wires. We also need some covers for those clips. It just makes sure everything is going to be nice and safe. So this, these clips, they go over it. As you can see here on this pre-made one, we've got the spades inside, we've got the covers here, and all our wiring is nice and tidy, and everything's safe. Nothing's gonna short out certainly things aren't going to pop off and that's what we want now there is another version i was saying that and i'll briefly cover it towards the end of the video but there is another version of one of these now with that one you will need what we call these 
think they name them on eBay and Amazon like P-Back Spades. It is literally one of them, but it has a little connection coming off. Now the reason being is because on this terminal here, I believe, if I can remember correctly, the neutral line coming from your extension comes in here, but then we need to connect up the actual LED portion of it and there's only three connections down here so it needs to piggyback from that down to that and that's why we need one of these types of connections so depending on the supplier on Aliexpress depending on who you buy off on eBay you can buy these on eBay and Amazon and so on they might send you that one and they might send you the other one uh, I'm no idea it just really depends but anyway I'll try my best to cover the other version but normally this is the this is the one we normally get anyway these are the, seem to be the more common ones at least so let's move on now let's start cutting our cable getting it all prepared and start putting this together so I can hear you now already why the hell would you use a knife to cut wires well if you're at home and you don't have the tools, this is probably the only way to go about it. Now, I wouldn't normally do this. I would probably use a pretty sharp pair of pliers, but I just want to demonstrate it using just really simple tools for you guys at home that just maybe not, you know, able to get hold of the tools or you just don't have them or whatever. So let's get going. Let's get this cable prepped and let's get it all connected up. So. Like I was saying before, I'm not going to use a huge amount of this cable. You don't need a huge, huge amount of it. So I want to use about that much. So I'm going to cut it about here. So let's do this now. And yes, I can hear you screaming, please don't do that. But this is just the way it's going to be for this video. So I'm just going to cut through this cable. And there we go. We don't need this just yet. We're actually going to probably cut this up just in a second to get some cables made up from it but we can put that to one side so we need a good length of cable from this so we need to cut it again so I'd probably say about that much you need this many this amount to actually give enough room so we can connect it up so I want to I want to cut this sleeving off maybe about say about there so here's the problem with a sharp knife you might cut into the earth neutral or live wire so we need to be careful with using these sort of tools with a proper cable stripper this wouldn't happen but we don't have that tool and we just have this knife so we just need to be nice and careful There we go, that was pretty painless. So there's our three cables, plenty, plenty of um, length on them, so we can make sure we've got plenty of length when connecting it up to here. So let's get these all connected up to their spades. So we need to trim the edges of them. So I just trim them a bit like you are cutting a carrot or a potato. Nice and easy. Trim away the cable in. Make it nice and neat. You don't want to be um, making a mess of this. You want it nice and round. So you want it nice and round. Just like you want this connection here, the actual end of the cable to be nice and round. Keep everything nice and neat. make sure you don't trim the actual copper because we need that I did actually trim a few bits off but make sure it's still nice and thick cabling and there we have it that's that trimmed up and ready to add the spades 
and the clear clipping. So we need three, one, two, three of them. And we need one, two, three of them. Now, I always forget to put these on. I always, always do it. So I always end up um, having to peel it all back and add it later on. So don't make a mistake like I do. Make sure you put these on first so you don't forget. There we go. So to put these on, it's really, really simple. It's very self-explanatory. You'll see this end of this spade here. Hopefully that's coming up on camera properly. And it'll be like a little long bit. That's the grip onto the actual rubber plastic of the actual cable. That's the grip onto it. So if I just use a basic tool like this, this pair of nose pliers, push that down onto the actual cable, give it a squeeze to grips on, and move it around to the other part and grip it on. That's it. It's nice. It's nice and gripped. It's not going to move. If say there was a, you pulled on the cable accidentally and it jolted something, this is not going to come flying out and cause you any issues. Now we need to join up the actual spade to the actual copper wiring. And this is the next section, which is just above, just these little, little wings here. Press these down, crush them down with a pair of pretty decent pliers. And again, Push the other side down. If you want, you can use these ones. And there we have it. Good, strong connection. It's better than soldering it in place, I'd say. It's better than just making a mess of it and just trying to get it in there and making some sort of NAF connection. That's a good, solid, strong connection. And then when you put your clear sleeve over the top of it, that, my friend, is a very safe electrical connection. Now we're just gonna repeat the process for these two and then we can move on to the next part. Okay, so that's my three connections made. I've got my live or hot, I've got my neutral or negative, and I've got my earth cable as well. It's all neat and tidy as you can see, and it's all neat and tidy here, that's important as well. And yeah, it's all nice and tight, nothing's going to move anywhere. Good, strong electrical connections. So we can put this to one side for now. So what I want you to do is I want you to strip down one of your cables, say, So we just use about, say about that much from the actual leftover cable that you have. So I just cut it. I just need to extract two of the cables from this. Nice thick cable in this, good quality cabling. So it's not always super duper easy to get into it. It's kind of what you want. When anything to do with electrics, especially mains, voltage, electrics, you want thick quality cabling. And yeah, so try to pull this out. There we go. So there's. A neutral cable, we need one of them. It's not that it's any different to their earth cabling because it's exactly the same, but it's just the color coding that we want to make people aware 
of what is going through it. So we'll get rid of this. So what I want you to do is I want you to put terminals on each of these ends. So I've already got one half made up, so here is a neutral cable. I've put one on this end, so we just need now to put one on that end. So we need to complete that one. And we also need a brown live one as well. So we need a terminal on that end and one on that end. Don't forget to put these on as well. Believe me, I've forgotten so many different times and uh, I end up putting all the clips on there finishing up and then realizing I forgot them. <laughs> so make sure you've put that on first before you add your little metal spade. So let's just do that now. So exact same as you were doing before, but just put in So now we've got our two cables that we were prepping before and again maybe about seven or ten centimeters it doesn't really matter too much as long as they're just you know a fair length not too long but uh yeah fair length so we've got our two connections we've got a live one we've got a neutral and it's just just really just to indicate what's going on in the circuit so here we have our power switch now normally when you receive these power switches, it, you normally receive it with this um, switch hanging out or out because it actually clips inside. Now there's one really important thing you need to be aware of is when you put this in, you need to make sure that it is, how's the best to explain this? Hang on, bear with me. So on the back here, we've got our earth got our neutral we've got this low pin here and then we've got four pins now you'll notice on yours that two pins are really close together and two pins are further apart these pins need to be this direction so these two pins that are furthest apart need to be below the live panel here that's really important because that this is where our live and neutral are going to be connected if we don't do it that way, well, we don't want to know. So our two closest together should be below all these pins and the two furthest away should be on this side. Take a good look at that when you're doing this part. Make sure these are the right way around. On the front it will look like that. And yeah, another thing you need to be aware of, a lot of the time these don't actually come with fuses so this is one is actually missing a fuse and they're just actually really simple I'll try and get this one out what we call um what the fuses we normally use with the sockets we normally use um uh, with razors with uh Shower razors, razors you would use in the shower. Normally they come with a, a specific plug socket, if that makes sense. And they come with these types of fuses. I'm not entirely sure what the technical term for this one is. I just I just know them as razor sort of uh, fuses. And they're very, much, a bit smaller than the traditional fuse you would get in, say, this, inside this plug, for example, a lot smaller. And yeah, so that's the one you need and they, they sell them on eBay or Amazon and they only cost very little and you normally get them in packs of 10 or whatever. Or you can get them at your local electronic store or whatever. But yeah, I just know them as the fuses you normally find in the sockets used for like an electric razor that you would you normally use inside a sh like a, in a bathroom, for example, or around the shower area. So... What do we do with these two? Well, it's really simple. I've got one already prepped here. We need to use 
old blue cable from the neutral, which is this this one just here. It has an N for neutral, so we need to connect that onto there. And then we need to connect it right to the lower pin on here. So remember we were talking about the pin pins just here and the way they were positioned. So the two closest together, this just needs to be onto there. Now I'm not going to connect that just yet because I want to connect this end onto it. So this pin just below the neutral, it connects up the live. Actually connects up the fuse, so I believe the live pin is connected through here and it runs through here. It goes across the fuse and it brings it into here. And then you connect it up to the top pin just there and just moves it to there, just like that. This should just clip nicely into place and then you can connect your blue cable in place, just there. See how I mean that the cable should be a certain length? I didn't get that quite right, did I? I think I was meant to use that. That would have been a bit better, wouldn't it? But it doesn't really matter. As long as everything's nice and secure, everything's nice and tight, nothing's going to go anywhere, then it is safe. It is literally as safe as it can be. So as you can see, it's nice and tight. Nothing's going to go anywhere. I mean, if you pull on it, you'll be able to get the pins out but you know if 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 something was to hit it or or cause any issues like that it's not going to come out so the final part of wiring this up is to connect your extension onto it now there's one more thing i want to talk about before we actually do that part and that's when this is going to be sat in sat outside your arcade cabinet or Hell, if you are using a 3D printer from China and you want to upgrade the power system, I've seen people use these. What's going to sit behind it? Yes, this is nice and protected, but you need some sort of protection to sit on the other side. So I'll show you what you can use just now. So that is us pretty much done with this wiring. But there is one really important thing that really isn't covered by a lot of the guides that I've seen. And that's what you're going to put behind the actual connection because that can't be left bare like that. Like I was talking about before, you're going to be putting your hands in there at some point and you don't want a nasty shock, even though that's pretty well protected now. It still needs added protection to make sure that if there were little hands getting themselves in there somehow, which is highly unlikely, but you know, got to be safe is what do we use so here we have a little um, basically electrical box and this is what I've been using to protect the other side of this connection now you can get these anywhere you can get these from electrical stores this one is by a company called MK I believe it is it's just a really simple back box and what this is going to do is just going to sit like that. Obviously, we're going to have like some sort of, um, you know, you're going to have your wood wall. Where, you know, this is going to sit in your cabinet. This is going to be wood, so it's going to be quite thick. And this is just going to sit and screw into the back of whatever you're building your, your cabinet from. You do need to modify it. Obviously, there's going to be a cable coming up inside of it like this. This, this hole is probably not quite big enough. I've just made this hole with a Dremel, I think it was, just, uh, yeah, so this cable will be sitting inside of it, like this, if I can squeeze them through, uh, like that, so, yeah, that cable will be sat like that, lots of protection there, you can probably get a grommet as well, a rubber grommet, and basically that will just fill this hole in, so it keeps it nice and tight as well. I'd recommend you do that. You can get the rubber grommets anywhere, electrical stores, and just get the right size in. And this will just sit like that. And it'll all be all enclosed, etc. Now you will actually have to screw it into place, and more than likely you're going to be using a self-tapping screw like this. Now one further thing I did decide to do with mine is to protect them. Now these are metal, 
normally you would have to earth something like this because this is going to be sat inside like that. Now on the very rare occasion that one of these connections pops off and rests on one of these, it might turn it live. So this would become live, wouldn't it? Um, so we just need to be aware of something like that. The chances are that happening are slim to none, but you know, there's every chance it could happen. So we just need to be on our toes. Now we could actually wire these together. So there's obviously be screwed in like that. Yeah, they'll be screwed in like that. If I can get them all in. They're screwed in like that. You have your wire there and this would be sat like that. And you could actually wire these up, wire these all together in a circuit, then connect it onto the earth. Now, how would you do that? Well, you wouldn't hash it together. You would use a piggyback of some sort and you would have that connected into there, into there. That would, that would come into there. And then your piggyback would connect to all the cabling. So these would be all wired together. Now, that's a bit of a faff, isn't it? Honestly, it is a bit of a faff. If you want to do that way, you can certainly consider it. All I did was cut some electrical tape, wrapped it round, and when it's in there, there's very little chance. If that were to happen, if the live cable was to sit on here, then it's safe, isn't it? So that's the way I did it, just to keep it really nice and safe. And that's the way really to do it. So the last thing to do now is to wire it all together to connect it all up so we can actually use it. So we have we have our earth at the top, so let's connect our earth. That's our earth connected. And then our live is just this one here. Connect that. And finally, our neutral is at the bottom. So all our connections are in place. And that's how you do it. That's, that's literally it. And everything's really nice and safe. There's lots of protection there so you don't touch anything and hurt yourself if you implement something like that into the into the connection then even better because then you really are protecting everything and at the end of the day we're dealing with mains voltage so we do need to be safe with it so there we have it nice and neat and tidy everything's where it needs to be and yeah so it did say i'd cover the other version of these arcade switches so we finished this one obviously just then uh, we got it all wired up now it's just slightly different the other version now on the bottom here we've got four connections on the other version we've got three connections so not a huge amount of uh, difference but it does uh, mean a slightly different arrangement with the wiring so if I draw the back panel of this um, I'll try and draw it that way so at the top here we've got we've got earth earth connection just here and just below it we've got neutral so neutral and just below that we've actually got a live connection just here so live and we've got three connections just here now what we need to do is on these we actually get a pin that's colored slightly different to the rest of the pins just here so this pin here just below the neutral live this should be where you have i think it's like golden color of the pin that's basically just to indicate the neutral connection to the neutral. So your wires here, we've got three wires, one, two, three, 
we've got one to the earth and we've got one to neutral to the blue cable to the neutral that's how that's wired we also need to pee back that to this golden pin that's really important to remember so let's recap that so we've got our cable here so our earth comes to the top obviously we've got the neutral exact same position we're going to there but we piggyback using one of these one of these piggyback connections I was talking about through the video uh, at the start of the video we need to piggyback that to the gold connection now this here is actually part of the switch like a bit was on here and this switch might come removed so you need to make sure that when you put that switch in the gold connection is located on this side so the neutral will connect straight to it now we've got our live connection just here and this live connection like we were using you know when we had just a strip of wire and we connected up the terminals you need to make one of them and that needs to connect from the live here and connect to over here to the left hand side we need a connection there and this final cable coming from our wire it needs to connect to the middle cable okay hopefully that's not too confusing there there is few and far between really is um uh diagrams for that and some of them actually wrong i've noticed some of them are wrong so let's go over that again. So our earth connection at the top from the cable, the green cable goes to the earth connection. The neutral cable just here, just the same location as on this other version of the power switch. The earth, the neutral comes to here. And remember, we're gonna put a piggyback spade on there. And the piggyback will mean we get a blue cable and so the actual cable from the extension will come into the side here and then we'll have a piggyback sitting on there and connecting onto the terminal at the bottom of the thing and remember that is color coded it's it's a kind of a coppery color so when you get receive it even if it just so happens to be this three pin um, combination just make sure that's uh, on the left hand side so it's below this 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 it's on this side and then moving on so we've got this live connection just here we need one of these to connect it connect it together from here to here remember put your terminals on there put your clear um, cover on there as well and finally the live connection the brown wire from your cabling from your extension needs to go to here I've actually got a picture here I'll actually put it up but it's on it's obviously I don't want to film it through here I'll put it up on screen and that's how it should be that's say taken from a couple of weeks or months ago um, as you can see here on the top here We've got our earth cable just below it we've got that piggyback connection that thing here so that's just there and that connects to our neutral and then the neutral is then piggybacked over to that copper connection on that side or the coppery colored connection you won't be able to see it too much but we've got just below that we've got, we've got the brown cable connecting over to the far Remember here and then finally the live connection from the actual cable connects into the middle one just there and that my friends is how to wire up that and the same principle if you want to add one of these you can do it just makes it a lot more safer and that's uh, and that's how to wire up that one so there we go